someone uh, someone left a comment saying, "What do I think of Larry Warren's account of uh, the Rendlesham Forest incident?" Um, I, to be honest, I haven't read the book. I know that um, Larry Warren, his co-author, Peter Robbins, have fallen out. Apparently, Peter Robbins is saying he no longer believes Larry Warren. Um, I don't. I don't to be honest, I don't think Larry Warren is any less credible than uh, any of the others involved in this. You know, Penniston and uh, Holt and all those, these other guys. Um, that said, I don't think any of them have any credibility. So I think the story has been embellished beyond all reason over the years. Um, certainly Holt in his memo, he mentions a beam of light coming down, but he, he says nothing about a beam of light coming down into the weapons, nuclear weapons storage area, which is the story he tells. If he's trying to attract the attention of the British MOD, surely in the memo he would have mentioned that this thing was hovering above the nuclear weapons storage facility and shining a beam of light down into it. I think that would have got their attention fairly quickly. That's not in the memo, is it? Um, there's a clip further on uh, uh, of a transcript of that memo, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll take a look at it. So, uh, just just look at this from... Uh, two very simple angles. One, from the uh, from Burroughs and Penniston and um, and Warren, they're people that are on the talk circuit. They make money out of doing these talks. They make money out of selling books. The Rendlesham Forest incident is a business for them. Um, now, if you look at it from the other side of the coin. Look at it from the alien's perspective, okay? You're the captain of an alien starship. You're in orbit around the Earth. And uh, you think, oh, there's a couple of Air Force bases there. Might be interesting to uh, just send a probe down, have a look. Have a look at the energy densities in, uh, in their nuclear weapons and have a look and see what their aircraft can do. Maybe get the probe to hover around a bit for an hour or so and uh, see if we can get some aircraft scrambled so we can, uh, we can monitor their performance analyze their performance see if they've got beyond paraffin burning interceptors um, so uh, so you're in orbit and uh, you've come here from another star system and you send a probe down and what does it do does it go up and down over the bases does it shine beams of light into the nuclear weapons storage facility? Well, according to the embellishment, it does. Does it have a look at the aircraft? Mm, no stories of that. What does it do? Well, it comes down in a forest near the Air Force Base, or between a couple of Air Force Bases, um, and hovers around between some trees. Now, what value would there be in that exercise to you as an alien starship captain? You come all the way from another star system, you send your probe down to Earth and you get it to hover around between some trees. What, uh, what information are you going to glean from that? Um, not very much, I suspect. Um, why would you... <laughs> Why would, you, why would you not send the probe to a more interesting location? Why would you get your probe to hover around between some trees um, and get some people chasing around, uh, chasing around after it? it? Makes no sense whatsoever. As, a, 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 as an alien starship captain, there would be zero value in that exercise for you. Um, so... When it comes to the accounts of the uh, this this particular incident, they're all over the place. It's got embellished beyond all reason over the years. Um, Peniston's uh, account of um, suddenly recollecting or finding in his notebook all this binary 30 years after the event that uh, when decoded uh, apparently is coordinates that uh, lead us to high Brazil in the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, basically they're, they're getting bored it's getting flat you know same old material they're presenting over and over again the audiences are getting smaller and smaller and smaller and so they come up and so Penniston comes up with this binary bullshit 
Um, to be perfectly honest, uh, I wouldn't single Larry Warren out as being uh, any less credible than the rest of them, but um, I think the rest of them have zero credibility. So that's, uh, that's my take on it. And um, I've said before that, uh, you know, my, uh, my prime suspect for the Rendlesham Forest incident uh, is going to be the high power transmitting station. You've got to bear in mind that uh, supposedly, according to the Hawk memo, these uh, these things hovered in the sky for one, one um, for an hour, I think it was, and another couple for two hours. Yet no aircraft was scrambled to go and have a look at these things. Makes no sense whatsoever. Um, if any of this more fanciful stuff were true, and Hawk wanted to get the attention of the British MOD, why isn't it in the memo? All right. Well, you know, here's a. Uh, Here's another uh, short video about the Rendlesham Forest inci incident and um, what I think happened. Uh, if you stick around and watch it, thanks for doing so. Okay, this is just a, uh, a video somebody's done about the Orford Ness Lighthouse rear shield effect. That's because the lighthouse has a rear shield. To prevent the bright light shining across the town of Orford Ness as the uh, as the uh, as the beam rotates around, uh, there are some pictures. I, I may I may include some pictures showing you uh, what I'm talking about. It's been mentioned by some of these investigators as well, and they've looked at the angles of the beam and all this sort of stuff, and whether it could be seen from the supposed uh, landing site or UFO activity, whatever, at uh, Rendlesham Forest. Now I'll put a link to this fella's video. Uh, it's the Orford Ness Lighthouse Beam Effect and it's by Bloody Hell Is That True who has uh, one subscriber so uh, I hope he won't uh, mind me including this little clip uh, in my video and um, if you do get to see this Mr uh, Bloody Hell Is That True I hope uh, I hope you'll look upon it favourably and consider that it might get you some more subscribers. Okay, <clears throat> here's uh, here's what this chap has uh, done in the way of a graphic to demonstrate the angle of the beam from the uh, from the lighthouse, so you can see where it's shielded. OK, here's a brief explanation of how the, the beam from the Orford Ness Lighthouse uh, is blocked by a guard on the rear of the lighthouse and, and this blocks the light falling onto the town of Orford. You'll see here there's a path that runs from the lighthouse and this runs directly to the town. Um, and you can see that this... Uh, there's the guard. The guard on the back of the lighthouse with a couple of notches cut into it. Uh, that, that stops uh, the light for a few degrees either side of the town. Uh, falling onto it. This yellow cone is representative. Here's a larger view um, and you can see there, uh, very approximate, that, that, that that's roughly where the, the light is blocked. Off to the left is the, the landing site, I've, I've called it the encounter zone. Um, it's the lead. Now that's interesting. If, if this fella's got this right, something is not making sense already because uh, the book by Larry Warren and um, Peter Robbins, I think it was. I know they've since fallen out, and Peter Robbins is saying that uh, none of what Larry Warren has said is true, apparently. Um, who would have picked that, eh? A UFO. So, someone making up a UFO encounter. OK, so just have a quick look at this. Now, where is it? This here. This is the end of the runway at Woodbridge. Bent Waters is a, is a little bit further up. So, and this is east, this direction is east. So presumably the east gate's around here somewhere, on both bases. I think Warren was at Bent Waters, wasn't he? So if you come left out of the gate, you're going away. You're going away, aren't you? You're going north. Either if you're at Woodbridge or Bent Waters. If you come out of the east gate and you turn left, you're heading north. Yet the supposed encounter zone is down here. Now has this guy got this right? Because that in itself sticks up a huge red flag, I think. 
Okay, let's see what uh, let's see what uh, this demonstration shows us. Burning site. This is the shadow and area. In this shot, um, you can see a 180 degree pan. Um, I'm standing about halfway down that path. And spin the camera around 180 degrees. There's Orford. And off to the left, quite a long way off to the left, you can see the approximate area of the uh, landing site or the encounter zone, as I now call it. And in this 3D rendering, very, very approximate again. This shows how the beam will sweep around and then be blocked as it comes in land. Um, even even with this wide blocking that I've, that I've done here, you can still see it's still viewable from from the, the landing site. Yeah. And that explains basically why why that is. Okay, so the, the lighthouse is visible from the encounter zone, apparently. It's going to be shining through trees. It's December. The air is going to be moist. There's going to be a lot of water molecules in the air. Now I've seen light um, doing really weird things across the desert in Australia. You know, a range of hills appearing and disappearing as the light gets refracted around. <coughs> okay. <coughs> so. Okay, here's a brief explanation. Okay, so th this fella is saying that uh, he's done a 3D rendition and. Um, the Orford Nest Lighthouse could actually be seen from what he's calling the encounter zone there. Now, if he's got the encounter zone correct, it's actually south of uh, Woodbridge, uh, which would be out of the East Gate and right. Um, that is interesting. Mm, OK, but what I think is far more interesting is I'll just go to Google Earth and I'll I'll I'll, I'll show you another clip. Uh, the, the big... Wrong button. <laughs> here's uh, here's Google Earth. Now here is the end of that runway. Here is the end of the runway at Woodbridge. Okay, Bent Waters is up here somewhere. And I think the encounter zone according to the other chat was down here somewhere. Now, if uh, I just zoom out a little bit, unfortunately, I don't think I can get the. Can I get the lighthouse? Yeah. Okay. So I can get the lighthouse and the end of the runway. Now there's there's Bent Waters up there. You see that? There's the runway at Bent Waters. Now, if he was at Bent Waters and he went left out of the East Gate, he's even further away from this. If he's gone left at the East Gate, he's going north, he's going up here somewhere. But let's say it's at Woodbridge, which seems to be where all the action was, supposedly. OK, so you go from here, let's get the ruler. Oh, of course it's... And we'll stick it at the end of the runway at uh, Woodbridge. There. And let's take that across to there. Which is the... So from there to there is the Orford Ness Lighthouse. It would have been good actually to get their, their position and some bearings of what they were actually looking at. So there's the lighthouse, and there is the end of the runway at Woodbridge. That's a distance of 6.42 miles. Now, I think Larry Warren has said that um, they went about a mile and a half from the end of the runway or from the edge of the base. So that's going to knock it down to, what, four and a half miles between there and the lighthouse. That's no distance at all, really, to see a lighthouse. But uh, what I think is very interesting and very curious, and what I think is more likely to be the culprit here, is, let's just go over here. And zoom in on Orford Ness Lighthouse. Uh, 
Okay, now here is the Orford Ness, the Orford Ness Lighthouse uh, position. And you can see this, this is uh, from Google Earth. You might recognise this from the previous clip. But just up the road from here, just, just a little bit further up the coast, in fact, hardly any distance at all up the coast, is this. Now this... <laughs> this installation here used to be a super-secret HF over-the-horizon radar project called Cobra Mist. Now, if we zoom in on this... Let's have a look. This building here. Now, Cobra Mist was shut down, apparently they couldn't get it to work properly. But the site's been used for high power radio and uh, uh, broadcasting and who knows what else uh, since they, the Cobra Mist project closed. Incidentally, this site is now owned by a private company called Cobra Mist. Now, the, this building here contains a lot of very high power transmitters, 600,000 watt transmitters, uh, amplitude modulated transmitters, so peak envelope power at 100% modulation, 2.4 meg megawatts of power. That's a lot of energy. Um, it's probably not that far off of what they use at HARP, is it? Uh, this particular, okay, that particular, that's a little, that antenna there. This antenna here is uh, 61 metres tall. This is actually the um, this was the, um, the standby antenna for the 648 kilohertz uh, World Service. It's a vertical uh, folded unipole, and um, it's something like 62 metres high, 61, 62 metres high. This particular one. This is currently in use by Radio Caroline on uh, 648 kilohertz. Now, just over here. On the same site. Oh, thank God. Uh, is that one of them there? Oh, here we go. So this is this is the same site here. We can see that's a radio tower there. There's another one there. There's another one there. There's another one there. And these radio towers beam this very high power radio signal over, over Europe. These towers are very tall. I can't remember exactly how tall. I might leave a, a link below to the Orford Ness transmitting station. You can look at the specifications for some of these things. Basically, you've got these towers in a line. They're slightly offset, but they shape a radio beam, high, a very high power radio beam over Eastern Europe. Now, I suspect what is a more likely explanation for the Rendlesham Forest incident is that there were some experiments going on at this site over those three nights. Either that or it was operating as a broadcasting station, but they had a problem with the, with the phasing or something on these antennas, and instead of all this 2.4 million watts of radio energy going out over the North Sea and over Europe, it somehow focused it back towards uh, Rendlesham, uh, Rendlesham Forest and uh, Bent Waters and Woodbridge. Uh, you know, six miles, six and a bit miles for that kind of energy is absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. And because the air was damp, there may have very well been some peculiar uh, plasma effects. Uh, you know, balls of light dancing about and all that sort of stuff. And I think that that is going to be the culprit, personally. These big radio masts at, uh, at Orford Ness. Remember, this is this is just up the road, literally from the just up the road, literally from the Orford Ness lighthouse, which is there. 
And if you look across to the east, that's where you'll find the bases of Bentwaters and, uh, and Woodbridge. So these guys may very well have seen something strange. They may have seen lights dancing around in the trees or above the trees or something like that. But um, when it comes to uh, structured alien, alien spacecraft flying around between the trees, certainly alien beings, um, personally, uh, I don't believe it. Um, okay, that's the end of this clip. Okay, here's a transcript from the famous Holt Memorandum. Colonel Holt, the deputy base commander of uh, Woodbridge, I think it was. And he says, uh, one, early in the morning of 27th of December, approximately 0300, two USAF security police patrolmen saw unusual lights outside the back gate at RAF Woodbridge. Thinking aircraft might have crashed, have been forced down, they called for permission to go outside the gate to investigate. The on-duty flight chief responded and allowed the patrolman to proceed on foot. The individuals reported seeing a strange glowing object in the forest. The object was described as being metallic in appearance and triangular in shape, approximately two to three metres across the base and approximately two metres high. It illuminated the entire forest with a white light. The object itself had, pulsa pulsing red, had pulsing red light on top and a bank or banks of blue lights underneath. The object was hovering or on legs as a patrolman approached the object it manoeuvred through the trees and disappeared at this time the animals in a nearby farm went into a frenzy the object was briefly sighted approximately for an hour near the back gate okay that's one now at the bottom of this memora memorandum halt says <clears throat> uh, right down here uh, numerous numerous individuals, including the undersigned, which is Colonel Holt, witnessed the activities in paragraphs two and three. So Holt didn't see a structured craft. He didn't see this triangular vehicle. This is uh, what he was told. Okay, so what have we got here on paragraph two? The next day, three depressions, uh, one and a half inches deep and seven inches in diameter, were found where the object had been sighted on the ground. The following night, the area was checked for radiation, um, beta gamma re readings of 0 0.1 millirongens were recorded with peak readings in the same three depressions and near the centre of the triangle formed by the depressions. The nearby tree had moderate 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 readings on the side of the tree <coughs> towards the depressions. Mm. Now, uh, there's there's no as far as I'm aware there are no photographs of people uh, measuring the centres uh, of these uh, these depressions um, the diameter of the depressions um, there's no really good images of these depressions um, I think I saw a black and white image of showing a triangle 9.8 feet wide. Um, on each side something like that but um, you can't really see the ground at all clearly um, anyone could just draw a triangle on the ground and take a, uh, a very poor quality black and white image and say well you know take my word for it at each apex of this triangle there is a uh, uh, the equilateral triangle there is a depression in the ground that's one half inches deep seven inches in diameter there's no close-ups um, why would you expect to find if it was an alien spacecraft, why would you expect to find radiation there? What's that got to do with anything exactly? Don't you think that um, if aliens had the technology to fly here from another star system, they may not actually have air, um, spacecraft that leak radiation or deposit radiation <laughs> on any planets they may visit? That makes no sense at all. You would think that uh, they would have cracked any kind of radiation uh, uh, problems by now. Certainly they're not going to be leaving radiation deposits all over the place. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, three. Later in the night, a red sunlight light, sun like light was seen through the trees. It moved about and pulsed. At one point it appeared to throw off glowing particles. No mention of anyone going to collect these particles, look for these particles. 
and then broke into five separate white objects and disappeared. Mm, does that sound like an intelligently controlled vehicle to anybody? Sounds like some sort of plasma to me. Uh, immediately thereafter, three star-like objects were noticed in the sky. Mm. Plenty of stars in the sky, Colonel. Um, to the north, one to the south, all of which were about 10 degrees off the horizon. The objects moved rapidly in sharp angular movement and displayed red, green and blue lights. OK, a bit unusual. Again, there could be peculiar effects from the high power transmitting station in the moist air. Uh, the objects to the north appear to be elliptical through an 8 to 12 power lens. They then turn full circles. The objects to the north remain in the sky for about an hour or more. Really? So um, these fascinating objects that you think might be alien spacecraft were not investigated by aircraft? You didn't scramble some aircraft to go up and have a look? Just sitting there for an hour while they're wrapping their, they're wrapping their, uh, wrapping their fingers on their... Uh, on their control panel saying, come on, uh, come on Air Force, where are you? We're sitting here. Um, the object to the south was visible for two or three hours and beamed down a stream of light from time to time. Numerous individuals, including the underside, witnesses the activities in paragraph two and three. So they were there for two or three hours, uh, sending down beams of light. We don't have any pictures of that. Um, they sat in the sky for two or three hours. They weren't looked at by any... No aircraft was scrambled to go and have a look at them. Bit odd. Um, Holt later said that they were uh, flying over the base and they were... Um, they, they were... Uh, they were dropping beams of light down into the nuclear weapons storage area. No mention of that here, is there? That's a, that's a, that's a later embellishment, I suspect. So uh, I think I've uh, I think I've mentioned this uh, Rendlesham Forest thing before, but someone said, "What do I think of Larry Warren's story?" Um, to be honest, I don't believe it. My personal opinion, I don't believe it. He was there with lots of people. Supposedly they had cameras. Not one single person, other than himself, has uh, has uh, backed this story up. There's no pictures. There's no video evidence. Um, I don't think his uh, story is uh, any less credible than any, any of the others, but I don't think any of the others have any uh, any credibility either. I think they probably saw some funny lights. I think there was probably a plasma effect. Might have been some funny light refraction going on from the lighthouse. Um, who knows? As I've said, you know, I've been out in the Australian desert and I've seen some really weird effects uh, from uh, from light refraction through different temperatures in, in the air and all that sort of stuff and uh, certainly railway signals at night trains at night over very big distances look really strange um, so yeah I don't um, personally I don't think there's anything alien to the Rendlesham Forest story um, this might be the end of the video um, but uh, there may be a bit more, depending on uh, whether I uh, whether I look into these guys a little further. But you know, Penniston's talking about this binary that he wrote down that he's it's coming to him 30 years later. Ridiculous! Um, I just don't believe that. I think I think they've done the story to death. It's been embellished beyond all reason beyond all reason over years and uh, over the years. And I think that was a step too far. You know, remembering this binary code that led to high Brazil in the Atlantic Ocean, it's just twaddle, really. Absolute twaddle. So, uh, uh, that's my take on the, uh, the Rendlesham Forest incident. Um, so whether it's Larry Warren or Jim Penniston or uh, Colonel Holt or Burroughs or any of these other guys, I think um, they're, all as, uh, they're all as credible as each other. And... Uh, Personally, I don't find it credible. So uh, there we go. Yeah, another video on Rendlesham.